Live from the heart of America, I'm Steve Greer, your soldier of truth. The tip of the spear against socialists here, ready to fight for you from the foxhole of freedom. And please, my friends, remember to think before it's too late. It's the Steve Greer Show, and here are three big things you need to know to kick off the day right now. Number one, Gold Bar Bob Menendez, the embattled senator from New Jersey, says he will not resign. He says the latest charges against him are just not true. He did not take those bribes. Number two. AOC says Joe Biden is wrong. The economy is in bad shape. In fact, the liberal firebrand called Bidenomics a crisis right now that's hurting the American people. And number three, those are just a couple of the bad headlines that are giving Democrats a severe case of anxiety right now. Trust me, these folks are in panic. The Democrats are taking hits from all directions right now, from the border to corruption charges, some leading all the way to the West Wing to the failure that is Bidenomics. And as we've been discussing, it is hitting the Democrats hard in the polls. Then yesterday afternoon, Ford Motor Company dropped a major bombshell on the whole EV transition, the whole climate change movement. When Ford announced it would be stopping construction of a controversial $3.5 billion battery plant that's owned in large part by companies with direct ties to the Chinese Communist Party, and those ties to the CCP were already under investigation by Republicans both in Congress and in Michigan. So today... The so-called Blue Oval Battery Park is on ice. And it could mean that other concerning purchases by the Chinese here on American soil could soon be ice as well. In just a moment, Pete Hookster will join me, the former House Intelligence Committee chair. He's a critic of all of these Chinese factories, and he'll be here, like I said. But I can tell you, for people around these plants, there is some celebrating going on. It began yesterday. But the concerns over the Chinese setting up shop in America has become just another bipartisan issue. And one the Democrats in Washington are fighting to come to terms with because ordinary Americans are saying no to all of it. All of it. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack says there are legitimate concerns. He is in Joe Biden's cabinet. He says there are legitimate concerns when China buys land too close to U.S. military bases, among other things. Listen to this. Has the Department of Agriculture seen anything in the purchase of farmland by Chinese corporations or Chinese nationals that would suggest a threat to national security or food security, or are those concerns that we've increasingly been hearing about, are those overblown? Well, I think there's concern, uh, as there was in the North Dakota circumstance, where uh, the Chinese uh, interest was purchasing a land near a, a military installation. Uh, I think there's legitimate concerns uh, in that space, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, you know, we've uh, articulated the need uh, as a department to be more engaged in the CFIUS process. Uh, I would also say that I think there's work to be done uh, to give us the tools to be able to do uh, uh, an even better job of ensuring that we know when these transactions take place. It's complicated, uh, but every county has their county recorder, uh, and on any given day somebody may walk into that recorder's office and file a deed, and there's no way of knowing precisely whether or not that is a Chinese purchaser. So we would, you know, we need to work on how we might be able to collect the information and be able to analyze that information in a timely way so that we would determine whether or not a threat exists. Or not. And there you have it. How do you determine whether a threat exists or not? This week started off badly enough for Joe Biden. He's on his way now to Detroit, where apparently he's going to walk the picket lines with striking members of the UAW. Strikes now in its eighth day, affecting workers and facilities in 20 states. The union vote in America, as you know, is getting smaller. The support for Joe Biden across the board getting weaker by the day. People looking to the previous president saying those policies were better. You know, the Democrats are wetting the bed, really, when they say things like this about Joe Biden. Listen to this. Right now, the polls head to head are more concerning than I would expect. But I would so much rather be in this position of having an incredible record for our president to run up. Yeah, more concerning than I would expect at this point. Really, Senator? Yeah, very concerning for you and all of the Democrats because your policies are failing. We bring in $5 trillion a year in taxes and spend seven. How does that make sense? It doesn't. And you know it's bad when not a single member of the administration can articulate a coherent answer and stick with the idea that everything is great and soon everyone will agree. They'll sing Kumbaya and live happily ever after. Right, go with that. 37% approval. It speaks for the anger of the American people, but apparently it doesn't speak to Corrine. Here she is. 37% approved? I hear you, I hear you. But it is, look, our focus is going to be on um, 
on what we can do to continue to deliver for the American people. Polls are polls, right? They are going to be all over the place. Uh, they are going to, they're going to, um, you know, they don't tell the whole story, actually. And that is just the way a poll is. Well, actually, the polls are becoming more consistent. May I share? Uh, the Washington Post poll called an outlier, had Donald Trump bu- up by 10 points over Joe Biden in a head-to-head election. That was just a couple of days ago. Well, another brand new poll from the messenger Harris X has Trump plus five, which is, if it had been by itself, would have been called an outlier. But guess what? Donald Trump is adding to his lead, not only over the field of Republicans. He's clearly going to be the nominee for the Republican Party unless something bizarre happens. He gets sick or something happens. But he is going to be the nominee for the Republican Party. And right now, he would beat Joe Biden in a walk away. Not even close. And there clearly is no plan for any of the major crises that have blossomed since senile Joe stumbled into the White House. There's no plan for any of it. I mean, it's obvious Biden has no actual plan for Ukraine, except to dump billions of cash and prizes there. No plan to heal the economy except to tell everyone, hey, it's going great. And no plan for the border except to keep repeating it's secure, which, of course, it's not. Dodge every question. Dodge every concern Americans have. That's the strategy they have. There is no other strategy making an appearance on Capitol Hill for this administration right now. Listen to this. 37% of registered voters, just 37% proof of the president's handling of the economy. He's at a 56% disapproval, the highest of his presidency. And 74% of registered voters say they have major or moderate concerns about the president's age and mental fitness. How troubling is that? Here's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on exactly what you just asked me, right? The first question, which is how do we uh, how do we continue to support um, uh, the workers, right? We're not going to get into the litigation of uh, of the negotiations here, but what we're going to do is continue to show uh, how much this president is working for American. Right. We're not going to get involved in the negotiations, but we're going to walk the picket line with them. I think that's pretty clear you're taking a position there, Kareem, but she wouldn't answer that. There is one person, as you can imagine, quite pleased with the latest polling numbers, especially those from the Washington Post, ABC News, showing Joe Biden with a paltry 37% approval rating and Donald Trump winning by 10 points. And with everything going on, I think that poll is on the money. Donald Trump on his way to winning a second term is the way this looks. Listen to this. A new ABC Washington Post national poll finds that in a hypothetical rematch between Trump and President Biden, Trump wins by 10 points. We're leading by uh, a lot, according to the Washington Post ABC, against uh, probably the worst president, definitely the worst president, I'd say, in the history of our country. Uh, That's hard to argue with. Joe Biden is so weak, so out of touch. So incapable of having a conversation or even knowing where he is on the stage. It's embarrassing for this country. It's gotten to the point that it's so embarrassing that Donald Trump is winning with people 35 and under. Think about that. One of the strong areas for Democrat voters over the years, young people, rejecting Joe Biden and embracing Donald Trump. Black voters, Hispanic voters, single women moving to Donald Trump because of the policies that he had in place before Joe Biden stumbled into the White House. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about that Ford plant closing, the EV plant. It's the Steve Gruber Show.